All right, guys, welcome to the stream. Today, we're going to be doing a big blank. I'm excited to be back from Hawaii, uh, back to resin casting. So uh, we'll wait a little bit for people to start getting into the, the chat room here a little bit. But uh, to start off, I'll, I'll probably have to repeat this a couple times. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be filling this gigantic bowl mold with resin. And uh, we had so much of the shredded money left over that I think one of these might be open, but... <laughs> Uh, we got a ton of shredded cash. This is the British money sent in by Mark uh, and actually gave me uh, at Maker Central. So we're going to do kind of a shredded money bowl uh, and we're going to be using the stone coat uh, supercast epoxy. I still have some of that left. That's the one that's kind of meant to be poured in kind of larger quantities. So I have maybe about a gallon of it left. We're just going to basically dump it all in this bowl and see if it can handle it. So it should be pretty fun. Uh, the stone coat, uh, the guys at stone coat gave me uh, some resins to test out. So that's what we're doing. So here's the super cast and they brought this product out mainly for, uh, you know, being able to pour thick uh, slabs, you know, like the resin river tables and that kind of stuff. Um, and they wanted me to kind of play around with it and see, you know, how does it work for turning blanks and all that kind of stuff. We've already done some tests with it, uh, but I wanted to kind of save some up and pour a gigantic bowl. And I thought today would be a good day to do that because I got a little bit of stuff to get done after being on vacation. I got some work to catch up on, but I figured if we just focus on one big fun blank, it should be pretty cool. So looks like the chat is getting started. You guys are warmed up. I missed you guys. How have you been for the last 10 days or actually almost probably two weeks at this point, but uh, howdy everybody. Uh, let's see here. Lots of people. Here we go. Finally. Yeah. Sorry. I started late today. Um, I was trying to get things ready for this. So it kind of pushed it back. And then I started the, the stream up and I had no audio. My mic wasn't working. So of course the day that I'm already late, it gets even later. So Christina, how's it going? You're not working today. That's good. Good to hear. Maybe you're already off work. I'm, I'm, I'm starting so late. So let's see here. Snuggles 2.0. How's it going? Aloha. Yes. So the trip was pretty awesome. Uh, I won't go into too much deep, you know, in-depth detail about it, but we did lots of fun stuff. We got outdoors. We did lots of snorkeling. I actually tried scuba diving for the first time. Um, it was just in a pool, but uh, it was pretty cool. We did it in Hawaii. We've always wanted to kind of try that out. It was really, really fun for me. The biggest problem, we, we were, we've wanted to do that, my wife and I, but she had ear problems when she was a child and she wasn't sure if it would work for her, like the, the equalization of the pressure and all that stuff. So uh, we tried it out in a pool uh, in Hawaii, <laughs> uh, but it was pretty fun. I had a good time. Uh, I want to do it more, but we'll have to kind of see how that goes. And we did lots of hiking and we ate a ton. I need to go on a diet after <laughs> all the food we ate over there, but it was fun. David, how's it going over in Ohio? You were surprised I was on? Well, yeah. I'm finally back. I, one of the biggest problems I had was when we got back the night, like that night, uh, the, the night before we came back, I started to feel kind of stomach upset, kind of like I didn't feel good. And then I started getting achy after we got home. And like, I've been like the first two days back, I don't know what it was, if I got like heat stroke or something. That last day we went on a hike and I went running also in the same day. And it just, so kind of got back and it was kind of like, oh, I feel terrible. But now I'm back and I'm alive and everything's good. So let's, uh, let's recap what we're doing today. So I have, um, cause we got more people showing up here. So we, we, oh, this thing's open. Goodness. We got the, the shredded money that Mark sent in. We got tons of it. And like I said before, when we did the, the British money, um, there's kind of a problem. You're not supposed to be selling this, I guess. I don't know. I, somebody told me that and I just don't want to get anyone in trouble. So, uh, I'm just going to be kind of using it up and, and making stuff. And I thought, why not throw a ton of that stuff and make a gigantic bowl? So I had this, this huge bowl, uh, blank, or I guess mold kind of thing. I just got it at the dollar store. Um, it's pretty big. Uh, it's a lot bigger than any bowl I've ever made before. Uh, and one of the problems, one of the reasons I've never used it before is it had this rim on it and it wouldn't actually even fit in my pressure pod, even the big one. So I cut most of it off. I left a little bit just to kind of show you guys, you know, how I snipped it off. No big deal, just scissors. But um, we're going to do that. And then we're going to be using stone coat uh, supercast epoxy. And we're going to see if it can handle pouring a gigantic mass. Now, one thing I will say, I know a lot of people, especially people like that, that are watching later, and, and some of you guys in the comments might say, why aren't you putting a center, you know, uh, like a piece of wood 
in the center to to save space you know not waste so much epoxy and that is uh, what I would probably normally do on a especially on a blank this big because you're going to be wasting a lot of epoxy that's just going to be turned away however in this case the whole point is I want to see if you can pour you know a large volume all at once with this resin so uh, I got it for free anyway, so I'm not like wasting my own money. Um, but uh, I wanted to kind of pour that. So we're not going to be putting a like a, a what, what, am I, what am I trying to like a plug in the center. Um, we're just going to basically pour a bunch of resin in there. The one thing I am going to do though that I don't usually do on a lot of my blanks, I'm going to actually cast a, a piece of wood. This is a piece of myrtle wood. I'm going to put that in the bottom. And that'll just make mounting a lot easier. I don't have to glue a glue block on and do all that stuff. So we're going to do that, add some shredded money, and then pour a ton of resin in there. And then I've set up my pressure pot so that I'll, I'll show you guys the setup uh, in a little bit, how I can get this thing in there. Uh, I'm using a five-gallon pot, and it's kind of hard to get way down in, into a pressure pot that's deep. So I'll show you how I set that up. So Snuggles from Arizona. Josh, you're in Sparks. Nice. Uh, David, um, I, don't, I don't have an email for you. <laughs> But you can email me. There's a contact form on my website. You just need a, a, a valid email address because uh, it, I don't know, the, the thing that, that keeps spam away uh, is pretty, it locks it down. So anyway, uh, let's see here. Let's get going here. Um, like I said, we're going to be using epoxy. Um, I'm going to be probably using a drill. Uh, we're going to pressurize this. That's one thing that might be a little different than some of the stuff that uh, Stone Coat typically does. You know, people that use Stone Coat would do. Um, I'm just going to get a drill mixer out. We're going to mix it up good and then use the pressure pot to get rid of any air bubbles. So first things first, though, uh, what we need to do first, I'm going to go and show you guys my pressure pot setup so that I don't have to do that when I'm trying to get this thing in the I guess we're not going to really run out of time on this one, but uh, rather just kind of show you guys the setup. But first thing I need to do, this is not stabilized. This wasn't even dried. Um, this is just a, a piece of wood that I cut up today. So we need to paint on some epoxy to seal the, you know, the wood off and, and the moisture is what the problem is. The moisture in the wood, we don't want that to interact with the epoxy. There's two things. Pro I'm guessing that it won't really react with the epoxy. I don't think you're going to get a reaction. What ends up happening though is you're going to get air bubbles. That moisture inside the wood, once that resin starts heating up, and I have a feeling this stuff's going to get pretty hot because large masses heat up even more, um, it's going to turn that moisture into vapor and then you get a bunch of air bubbles that even the pressure pot can't fix. So uh, we're going to be getting some five minute epoxy out. I don't really, all you need is five minute epoxy. You could also use, you know, whatever resin that you're using. However, this stuff takes forever to, to cure. So five minute epoxy, seal it off and we'll be good to go. So before we start doing that, I'm going to take you guys over and show you uh, what I did. It's nothing spectacular, um, but I will kind of show you what the problems are and why I've come up with a, a solution uh, for the pressure pot. So let me switch uh, camera views really quick. And there we go. So there's my pressure pot. You can see there's a little platform in there. Now, if I take this out, all I did was stuck a bucket. <laughs> you know, we're not going technical here. It's just a bucket upside down. And I just put this little platform on top of that. Now, the problem is trying to get a pretty big uh, mold into a deep pot it starts to get a little bit difficult now this would be easier if this wasn't on a table i guess but this thing's going to be flimsy number one and i just don't want to mess with it i don't need to t put it all the way down to the bottom so if you put a bucket in there put a little platform on it now that's easy. That's way easier than messing around with <laughs> doing it the other way. So that's why I've kind of altered my pressure pot a little bit and came up with a little bit of a solution. Uh, next thing we're going to do before the epoxy, actually, um, I'm ju I just thought I'd kind of show you guys what I did. This, this bowl had this big rim around the edge and it, and it, it might have like really closely fit in there, but there's no way to get your hands and all that. So all I did was take some shears and let's make sure that I'm on the camera while I do this. Nothing special. Again, we're not, we're not going high tech here, guys. Just cutting that off and now we're good to go. 
Uh, it didn't need that rim. The only one thing that I will say that that rim did was it pro provided a little bit more stability support. So this thing might be kind of flimsy, but it should be fine. And next, let's do some epoxy painting on our little, uh, it's not really a glue block. It's going to be kind of the base. I thought it'd be kind of cool to, to put a little bit of wood in there. And I had this myrtle wood kind of hanging out. Jamie Page, super chatting already. Next vacation. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. I need it. I got to be honest. It's really tough. Like the, the flight home from Hawaii, it is absolutely the worst flight on the planet. Like you are just like, I don't even want to go back to reality. Uh, and I will say, if you guys ever get a chance to go to Hawaii, uh, make sure you check out the big island of Hawaii. Um, that's our favorite kind of um, a lot of people go to Honolulu and it's cool, but I don't really, my, my problem with Oahu, the bit, you know, that Island, it's kind of mostly there, there's a lot of like, there's like freeways and it's like, it just doesn't feel tropical vacation -y there. It's, it feels like I used to live in Vegas and it felt like I was just in Vegas. There's like traffic and all that. So I highly recommend the big Island. That's where we got married and we've gone there like four times now. There's so much cool stuff to do there that, that's always my recommendation. Uh, if you can't go there, Maui and Kauai are really good too, but the big islands got my vote. So let's uh, switch to this view. Oh, actually, well, after we get done with the casting, I'll show you so you guys don't have to sit through it. I got the, the blanks from, um, from before I left finished and they turned out really cool. So I, I'm excited to share that with you guys. We'll do that at the end. And then I got picked up some, some goodies over in Hawaii. Uh, another good reason to go to the Big Island is Aloha Woods is there and they got all kinds of awesome stuff. So what we're gonna be using, this is just the whatever was on the shelf at Home Depot, uh, five minute epoxy. So we're gonna be mixing up a lot of this stuff. I'm gonna get some gloves on because I don't love sticky fingers personally. <laughs> you know what? You know what I had? I had an epiphany on our vacation um, you guys know that a lot of you guys know that I bring that, that Yeti, um, like water bottle thing to the shop, but I don't really drink out of it cause it's got a giant mouth. I didn't realize that it was insulated <laughs> and, and the, the bottle, the water bottle that I usually have is just an Nalgene plastic one. And we were in Hawaii and like, it just, it was worthless having that thing stay in the car all day. And I, I had this whole epiphany about these, these uh, insulated water bottles while we were in Hawaii. So now I got a new one. Um, this one's insulated and like it, it can be in like super hot. It was like 95 degrees in Hawaii. It can sit in the car and, it, and your water stays cool. Go figure. I didn't even know, honestly, I, that, that Yeti cooler thing that, that, that I have <laughs> was just given to me. And so I didn't really realize what it was. And I don't really necessarily keep cold water in. I just keep water in it all the time. So I didn't realize that it was like insulated. I'm an idiot. That, that's, that's the moral of this story. But I'm sm smarter now because I have a, an insulated water bottle. Okay, so here's our little blank. Um, I'm going to try and cover like all surfaces of this thing. Uh, even the bottom. Just because. Um, if you don't cover every, you know, every side of it, like all you really need to do is cover where the resin is going to touch, which is going to be like the top and the, around the edges. However, some resin is going to get on the bottom and I'd rather just kind of block it off so I don't get any bubbles coming up from the bottom. Frisbee. Yeah. Let's see here. <laughs> Big Texas style pressure pot. Yeah. Which one did you get, Jake? Did you get a, a California Air Tools one? Or TCP Global or I got the CA Technologies. I gotta be honest, that five gallon I was a t it was pretty expensive. Like I don't really use that one that much. And uh, it was it was quite a bit of money for, for how much I use it, but I do like CA Technologies the best. Um, I just, I really trust them and their features and everything like that. But looking back, I probably could have just gone for like a cheaper one. But I definitely would not trade in my two and a half gallon CA Tech pots. I love them. 
California Air. How's that thing working for you, man? Uh, for anybody that's uh, getting into pressure pot setting up, especially if you're doing like a, the bigger ones, um, Jake's video is really good. He walks like every step through the, the setup. All right, so we got that all kind of mixed up. So I'm just going to start with the top. We're just You don't need to put a lot on. It's not like, you know, you need to like put this thick mass of, of epoxy on this thing. The main thing is you just need to seal it off so that the, you know, when you pour your resin on, it's not going to contact anything that, you know, like the moisture is not going to be able to kind of escape from the wood into the resin casting part. So just kind of paint on pretty thin layer, no big deal. Um, and the beauty of using five, now you don't want to use um, CA glue, like super glue um, to do this. CA glue is going to, it, it takes quite a while to, to cure. And while it's curing, it's, I should have maybe done the sides first. <laughs> yeah, we'll be all right. This is going to just be a general mess that I'm making. In fact, I think it is already a mess, so I'm just going to make it even messier. Um, anyway, uh, the, the, the CA glue, that stuff, it takes like 24 hours to fully cure and it off gases while it's curing. So you can't use, even though CA glue sets up fast, it doesn't cure fast. And so five minute epoxy is a much better way to go for doing this kind of stuff than CA glue. Um, I've tried it and it, it, the other, the other issue with CA glue is it's a, a hard brittle type of material which means that it can kind of crack, especially under the pressure of turning when you start you know, cutting into stuff and, and those pressures are being applied to the blank. Um, the bond between the, the resin that you've poured on top and that CA glue um, generally can crack a little bit, I think is what's happening. And so you get this kind of funky mess. Um, but with five, five minute epoxy, I can paint this on and I can literally, you know, once it just kind of skins over, um, I can, you know, cast any kind of resin on top of this now. So I definitely recommend five minute epoxy over anything. Uh, yeah, waste block. I don't really plan to waste it though either. So I don't know if I'd call it a waste block. That's why I was kind of saying it's kind of a glue block, but I kind of want to keep it. I don't usually add, you know, like Nick Zametti does that. He, he, he uses like wood in, as a base and leaves it in the, the project a lot. Um, and I don't really do that too often. I've been doing it a little bit more. That's kind of what I had in mind for this one, was, was keep it there as a little bit of the base. We'll kind of have to see how it turns out. I don't really have any serious you know, plans in mind for the blank. I just wanna mainly test that resin out and see if it'll hold up without cracking or overheating in any way. But I do want to uh, do want to make it nice, you know. So I thought we'd do something a little different. All right, so five minute epoxy painting is always fun. So what have you guys all been up to since I've been gone? I tried to kind of stay in the loop, but I got to be honest, we did a lot of stuff on vacation and I didn't really have a whole lot of time even just to check stuff. So what have you guys been doing while I've been gone? We've been, it was a pretty long trip. We, we extended it a little bit longer than just one week. Plus there's kind of a day travel time. We had to drive to Sacramento the day before so we could fly out of Sacramento. And then uh, <clears throat> coming back, we had to do the same thing we actually drove straight after we landed <laughs> which sucked but didn't really want to pay for another hotel room and then of course there's road construction at one in the morning in the middle of nowhere in the mountains i'm like seriously and we're sitting there for like 20 minutes <laughs> like what are the the odds at least i gotta be honest it's better than like middle of the day i, I hate that in the summers when they do road construction, you're sitting there for like an hour in like 150 degree heat in the middle of the desert. That's the worst.
might have to kind of wait for this to sort of cure up a little bit before I finish. Because I'm kind of running out of holding spaces. I want to make sure that I'm getting it covered. I'm looking, I'm, I'm trying to see the, the raking light um, and see if there's any areas. It looks like there's a couple like kind of thinner areas on the top here that I just want to add. Uh, one thing that's nice, it doesn't really matter what it looks like because once the resin, you know, that you pour on top mixes with this, it'll just be clear. So you won't even know that there's there was epoxy on here. So that's kind of one of the nice things. Um, I think I'm going to get a brush out. I think that might actually be a little bit easier. Um, I'll caution you, though. These, these chip brushes that you can get, these cheap ones, you lose, um, and I just got these at, like, Harbor Freight or wherever, Problem is the bristles come out really easy. So just, just be warned, you might have to kind of pick bristles <laughs> out of your, whatever you're painting. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that. There's a big old bristle. There's one. Sometimes they're better than others, but So I didn't pick up a whole lot of stuff uh, to cast in Hawaii. I know a lot of people were like, oh, you should pick up a bunch of stuff. And the problem is they really don't like you taking <laughs> stuff from Hawaii. Like, uh, I don't know. It just, I don't really know what the, I definitely know they don't like you taking lava. Um, that's kind of a no-no. But even some of the, the organic materials, plants and stuff like that, they don't really love you taking them. So I didn't really, you know, gather stuff um, while I was there. Uh, but I did pick up a box of uh, tropical wood cutoffs at Aloha Woods. They sell a little cutoff. They have a cutoff bin that's like you just buy by the pound. And it's got like koa, mango, monkey pod, and it's all just cutoffs that are perfect for you know, pen turning, small, like kind of smaller stuff, hybrids. And it's basically junk to them. You know, they can't use it. Woodworkers don't really want it because they're kind of use, useless sizes. So it's like perfect. It's cheap. And then they just toss it into a, a flat rate box and send it home to you. You don't even have to check it on the way home. It's a great setup. And then I also picked up a little bit of wood, some koa planks that I'm hoping to make a, kind of a table out of like a small occasional table type thing, something like that. All right, so it looks like I've gotten the edges. I'm gonna try and kind of rotate this around. We don't have really good light here, but you can kind of see. Got this thing pretty well coated. So I'm just gonna set it down for now. And we're gonna let that top and sides cure up a little bit so that we can kind of get down to the bottom. Get down to the bottom of this and uh, We'll get some epoxy on the bottom there. So what I'm going to do is hot glue this little wood plank, uh, wood disc thing, down into the bottom of here. So we'll just add a little hot glue, keep it you know, from floating around, moving. And then it's just a matter of mixing up a ton of resin, adding some shredded money, and then going to town. So let me stop and see if you guys had some stuff that you guys have been doing. Been attempting to make my own thin blue line blanks. Yeah, it's kind of tough to, to figure out, that's the wrong one, um, the right size of things, but a couple tests and you'll get it, you'll get it taken care of. Got an order for 30 pens and 10 bowls, woo, nice. You've been watching Jamie turn, <laughs> yeah, I know, Jamie's been turning like a madman. He's got so many good videos up. That one was cool, the, the blue pine cone. Uh, let me, I'm gonna go and, I'm gonna go find it. I'm gonna toss a link in, cause it was cool. Um, I, was, I was hoping you would, like whoever got that when I, when I originally made that blank, I was hoping that it would be turned into a box, basically. Um, or maybe like a lamp. I've seen, you know, I, I made one of those a while ago. Um, but yeah, you totally nailed it, it was awesome. Huh. Have you ever tried typing in Jamie Page into the YouTube thing? You sure did look, you got a lot prettier and I didn't realize you were so into makeup. 
<laughs> that didn't work. All right, JP Woodwork. Uh, there it is. Oh, turn the volume off. Here we go. So if you haven't checked it out, guys, check this video out from Jamie. Let's see here. Collab? Yeah, I saw that. I didn't know exactly what was going on. I was kind of, I came back right when you guys uh, started kind of trying to catch up with YouTube videos, right when, uh, when you guys launched them. So I got to check those out. Let's see here. Turned an ingrain butcher block cutting board into a platter. Nice. That's a good idea. Actually, I was just thinking about that. I, I, I wanted to see if I can find a, uh, like a table, like a wooden table that, um, like, you know, used or something like that. Like you pick something up for like 10 bucks or maybe like, maybe Ikea type, you know, something like that. And then like basically just carve out a, a resin river table out of something pre-existing. So you're not like taking live edge. You're like creating live edge kind of table. I thought that would be a really fun project, like a up, up, uh, what, what do they call that? Upscale, not upscale, up, <laughs> I can't think of it. Upcycle, upcycle, uh, uh, like a used table. Hey, what's up, Mark? Yeah, I remember you. Mike McEwen, what's up, man? All right, so let's see here. This is our five minute epoxy curing. Oh, yeah, close, it's still sticky. I'm gonna wait just a little bit longer. What else is, well, while we're waiting for this to Oh, the, the camera's in the wrong position. While we're waiting for this to, to cure up, don't look at the ca camera right now. We'll, uh, we'll do some show and tell, so we're not just standing around. Uh, there we go. Okay, so move this out of the way. That'll be for later. All right, so the blanks, uh, if you guys remember, before we left, this is what we made. And here are the results. This one's pretty fabulous. We went with that peacock uh, metal flake and white pearl. Uh, and it's got a chunk of walnut in there. I think this thing's going to be pretty wicked. I still need to clean it up and everything. It'll look a lot better once I cut the edges. But man, that thing sparkles. Look at that. And then this one, we did green and orange. And we got the, the kind of black and orange uh, Buckeye Burl chunk. So once again, this one, I think this is going to be pretty wicked. So I can't wait to, you know, cut these up and, and get all the kind of junk off the edges of, of this. So you can kind of really see where that, that wood is. But I think it's going to be a pretty, pretty cool blank. So those will be cut up soon and added to my shop. Um, let me show you guys something that was really cool. I'm going to actually have to zoom out because this thing's massive. I went a little crazy, guys. I didn't mean to. I really didn't. But I bought a gigantic chunk of Koa, and this thing cost 90 bucks. <laughs> but look at this massive chunk of Koa. I was, it was the only like bowl blank kind of turning blank size thing that they had. Everything else was monkey pod, which is cool, but... Koa is what I love. Um, and actually this, this ring is zebra wood, but my wedding ring is, is like this one and it's got Koa wood inlaid in it. So I'm a big fan of Koa. And uh, so I don't know what I'm gonna do with this thing yet, but I've kind of sealed it up a little bit. It's kind of cracking a little bit here and there, but that's the good thing about being a resin caster. I don't really care if it warps or cracks or does anything because I can still use it and make something really cool. So I'm thinking, I don't know, it's tough. Tough to figure out what I'm going to do, but I'm going to kind of put it on the shelf and think a little bit, and we'll do something kind of cool with this, I think. And then the other thing that I got, and again, I got that at Aloha Woods. I got a box of goodies. And like I said, they just have a box full of all kinds of whatever, just cutoffs and stuff. This is some uh, kind of early wood looking uh, monkey pod. And I tried to get some, you know, kind of live edge stuff just random chunks and it's super cheap. It's like two bucks a pound, I think, uh, for anything that's not Koa. 
And then the co is four bucks a pound. And this stuff doesn't really weigh that much. So got some koa there, another little bit of monkey pod. This thing's got some pretty cool cracks in it in there, bug trails or something. Uh, I think this is mango, yeah, mango. Pretty sweet. So all kinds of goodies in here. I, I actually got quite a bit of uh, koa. Picked up a few uh, pen blank type things and live edge chunks. So I'll be making some cool blanks with this stuff. And then the last thing that I got from them, and I, I just had them ship all this stuff back. I think you can order this stuff online also. So that's something to kind of keep in mind. I think you might be able to just like order stuff directly from them and have it shipped to you if you don't, if you're not going to make it out to Hawaii. Uh, but I got a couple of these little planks, koa wood. And what I was thinking was making a, a kind of a resin river table, a small one uh, with koa, kind of like a side table type thing. Originally, I only got two of these things. And originally I was thinking I would cut them in half, but I think that's probably not going to be enough. <laughs> so I think I'm going to get one table out of this, but I think it's going to be pretty wicked. Really looks beautiful. A lot of people are like, oh my God, you spent $37 each for those things. Heck yeah, Co is not, not cheap. Got that nice live edge. So it should be kind of fun. Little, little project for the future. Letting this stuff dry out a little bit because Hawaii is way hotter way, or way wetter than Nevada. All right, so I think our epoxy should have cured up by now. Let's see what you guys are up to. Hey, Lawrence, glad you can make it out. I am glad that it's been helpful for you. That's good. Let's see. Peacock. Yeah, that green is pretty sweet. Christmas. I know it was totally Christmas. Actually, I got to be honest. So they have these massive, I mean, huge slabs of like koa and some other tropical woods there. And I was uh, going into it. I was like, I think I want to get a gigantic slab of koa and make a resin river table out of it. And, <laughs> and then I saw the prices. Oh my God. Like, I mean, seriously, like one of those things, it would be like $3,000. And I'm like, and that's not even, that doesn't even cover like the shipping home. Like that would have been hundreds. I was like, yeah, maybe I'll get some smaller pieces. It's <laughs> just no way, no way. Let's see. Let me, I think I missed a question. Any decent clues not to lose colors? I got to be honest. I don't, I am not the person to ask. Uh, about flowers um, it's tough because if you dry it out in an oven you're it's just going to kind of turn brown um, the only options that i know of um, you can press them and generally the colors are going to stay but then you got flat flowers <laughs> so that kind of sucks um, or you can um, you can try to use silica gel and i i the problem with that is it takes quite a long time and like you got to kind of like recharge the the silica gel i just haven't had enough time to actually sit down focus on it and and try to get really good results but that I, i've gotten a few things that dried out fully and the color remained um one channel that i would recommend is um i'm not sure what her channel oxana bell is her name i'm just going to type it into the chat uh and um Dang it, I can't think of her business name. Ala Mold, I-L-A-M-O-L. Um, Oksana Bell with Ala Mold. If you search YouTube, she's done a couple videos on drying out flowers um, using silica gel. She even has one where you like, you microwave stuff in silica gel so that the, I guess the moisture kind of, you recharge the silica gel that way while you're doing it. So it's kind of tough. Uh, it's a hit or miss and I definitely, I just don't have enough experience to really give you any really like solid no you know no questions it's gonna work kind of <laughs> suggestions but yeah i was kind of thinking like a like a side table kind of thing <laughs> resin and wood table legs that would be pretty cool i don't know if i want to spend that much time finishing them though kind of thinking the problem is i don't have a lot of time to, to kind of mess around with that stuff 
it would just be kind of a fun project, but I just don't, it's still kind of sticky. Um, I just don't have enough time to, to spend on it. So I, I'm probably just going to go with like metal legs, something prefabricated so I can just kind of attach it and just focus on the, the tabletop with my time. But I don't know. The, the nice thing about doing that is, you know, whatever the bottom is, generally you could switch it out. So if it, down the road, if I wanted to, you know, get something different under there, I can, I can kind of fix that or change it without too much problem. All right, so we got our top done and I'm just looking at this. Oh, you guys can't see what I'm doing. I'm looking at this and, and the light is kind of raking down and back. Kind of got a little bit of a fingerprint. I don't think that's gonna show up, but I'm gonna try and kind of get rid of that. Um, looks like we got everything pretty well covered. Maybe a spot or two. Um, what I'm gonna do is grab a piece of wax paper so that it doesn't stick to whatever I flip it over on. And that should work pretty well so that we can get the bottom done and then move on with this casting. Okay, so get some more epoxy mixed up. You guys can see. Let's try and there, how about that? Not too bad, not the worst view on the planet. <laughs> Nick, what's up? Hey, Nick, actually I've been, since you're here and I can just ask directly, uh, school year's coming up. Um, I got a box of those, uh, those blanks, like the ones that I sent you before. Would you be interested in some more pen blanks for your class this year? Let me know, because I got quite a few right now. And I have uh, slimline pen kits that I can send out too. I think I did that last time, I'm not sure. Hey, what's up, Chris, how's it going? That's not true, Doug. All your knowledge, you've done lots of stuff. So now you have quite a bit of experience too, I would say. And you do different stuff than I do usually. You got, you know, like bigger blanks and stuff like that. So I, you got, you're pretty knowledgeable already. You jumped in and you, you didn't look back. So you got lots of knowledge. Okay, so we got more epoxy mixed up. And you could use, like I said, you could use pretty much any resin. I would, I would recommend going with an epoxy. Um, it generally will kind of mix with whatever resin you pour on top. Um, it works fine with alumilite, um, and it's gonna work fine with epoxy, of course, and it'll work fine with polyester resin. So, um, polyurethanes, uh, I, I would imagine you could use alumilite, um, and you can definitely pour alumilite over that. The nice thing about alumilite is it's gonna cure fast, you know, if you just use it to paint on and seal off something. I'm not, I would imagine it would work with epoxy being poured on top. I don't know if it would work so well with polyester resin uh, being poured over it if you use the alumilite. I don't know why you would use alumilite to seal it and then pour, <laughs> pour polyester resin um, on top, but, and, the opposite, I wouldn't use polyester resin either. I don't think that's a good way to go. That's an, another brittle resin, and I think you're gonna get the same kind of cracking problems that you get with CA glue. Possibly some off-gassing issues, I don't know. I, I don't use that stuff, I just pretty much stay away from it, so I don't know the ins and outs exactly, but I probably wouldn't recommend it. Pretty much sure shot, just use an epoxy, and it doesn't really matter what epoxy product. Five minute epoxy, casting epoxy, tabletop epoxy, you know, whatever it is, it's all pretty much the same stuff. All right, so pretty much got this thing slathered up. I'm good to go now. Now we just need to wait for that bottom to cure. 
Kind of wish I had like a 30 second epoxy. That would be even better for this. <laughs> well, I started pretty late and we haven't really done anything, Billy, so you're, you're good to go. Uh, if you're just joining the fun, I guess let's, let's just for the people that have, have just kind of started to tune in. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to use this giant bowl mold that I bought. I got this at the 90, 99 cent store. Uh, it's called Serving Bowl from 99 cents or less or more. Uh, so we're, we're going to fill this guy up. We're using Stone Coat supercast epoxy they sent me this stuff to kind of test it play with it uh, and i have about a gallon i'd say left of this stuff we've done some other tests and it worked fine um, i don't like the working properties particularly it takes quite a while um, you're, you're going to have a long open time and you're also going to have a pretty long demold time with it however the turning went fine um, you know it, it'll definitely work fine for for turning stuff um, but I wanted to see, can we just dump a ton of this stuff <laughs> into a into a big mold and will it overheat? Um, this, this super cast one, they have like three or four different types of epoxy products. This one's supposed to be the, you know, you can pour the most with it, but we're going to do a little experiment to see, does it work, you know, for something really quite big? Um, and then I, the other thing that we got is shredded money sent in by Mark over in the UK. So shredded British pounds, we're going to add to that. So lots of stuff. And then what we're doing over here, uh, let me switch to the casting view. What I'm doing is painting on some five minute epoxy uh, to seal this little piece of wood. It's a piece of myrtle wood that I just had laying around. I just wanted to add that. It'll be easier to, to kind of grab onto. Uh, and I don't have to, after the fact, glue a piece of wood on for a glue block. Um, and I kind of wanted to have a little bit of wood in the base. So we'll kind of have to see how that works. It may not be, uh, we'll have to kind of see how it works in the end. But that's what we got going on today. Should be pretty simple. Once we get everything kind of set up, we get this thing mounted in the bottom of our bowl. That's the wrong view, sorry. Uh, once we get that, that glue block thing, it's, I'm not even going to call it a glue block because I kind of want it to be integral. I'm, I don't want to cut it away. Um, but once we get that thing mounted in the bottom of the bowl, then it's going to be kind of off to the races. We just need to mix our resin, add some money, and then dump it in, basically. So it should be pretty easy. What's the best silicone molds for blank, blank making? Free silicone molds for blank making is the best that I can give you. <laughs> but um, I get mine from ptownsubby.com. Um, you can get those at Turner's Warehouse as well. Um, so either, either website. I'll give you a link to Turner's. Uh, real quick here. Where are we at? There we go. I'll give you a link to Turner's Warehouse. You can pick up the silicone molds there. Uh-oh, what happened? Error. Try again. Hmm. Hmm. It didn't work. There we go. Uh, they got pretty much everything you need. They got the single ones, like if you're doing like the tube in castings, you know, where, where the tube is in there, like, like blank, uh, label blanks. Uh, they also have the single, you know, pen blank ones and they got brick molds and all that kind of stuff. Stopper molds for silicone. Um, and they also, I think, I'm pretty sure that they have the HDPE molds as well. So lots of, lots of stuff. Yeah, the shredded the way that I deal with the, the sinking to the bottom issue with shredded money for the most part is just add a ton of it. Um, if you load it up enough to where even if it sinks, there's nowhere to go. It's just filled up. So it's almost like it's a almost one to one uh, or maybe half to one, you know, two to one kind of thing, resin to, to shredded money. If you add enough, you're good to go. Let's, I need to go back and look. Did Nick answer... Where are we at here? Uh, wow, I missed it. Yeah, that's fine. I don't. It, either way, as long as it's going to a good cause, Nick, I'll, I'll get another box of that stuff sent out to you. No problem. 
Let's see. Uh, it's hard to follow all that. <laughs> this thing, you guys are, are talking quick. What was the, there was, I think there was another part of that question. Uh, brands or HDPE. Um, yeah, so P-Town Subby is good for, for silicone. Um, and then I actually like his HDPE molds as well. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure Turner's Warehouse has those, or, or you can get them at P-Town Subby. Um, I like his construction method and, and the way he does these. Um, they're, they're just screwed together. But it's, it's got like a, you know, tongue and groove, not tongue and groove, uh, more like a mortise and tenon kind of thing. It's all grooved out, CNC'd. Fits well, good quality. Uh, Lizard Blanks makes some as well, um, but theirs have like wing nuts on the outsides, which make it less, it, it, they stick out of the outside of the, the mold. So you can fit less, basically. You have to get a smaller mold to fit it into, especially like a Harbor Freight, the smaller pots. Um, having all that extra stuff, I don't like it, but some people like it because you don't have to, you know, wing nuts are toolless. So both of them are high quality. I kind of personally prefer the, the P-Town Subby ones myself, though. <clears throat> Just turned some HDPE and made an ice pick. I turned HDPE once and the ribbons wrapped up on my spindle and then actually, like, somehow kind of broke the seal on my bearing, the spindle bearing on my lathe, and it really sucked. <laughs> so I don't really... Because the, the ribbons of that stuff are, like... They're not, you know, like a Lumalite or, or epoxy shavings, they can just rip. Whereas HDPE is like really stringy stuff. Same with PVC pipe. So just, just watch that. The, if you don't want those things to, to really wrap up on your spindle, they can cause problems. But it turns fine. Nothing, nothing wrong with it. <clears throat> uh, yeah, no problem, Julie. Oh, Julie, super chat. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. That's cool. One inch by one inch by five inch. Yeah, I know. I I kind of wish... I'm actually having... Now, here's another thing. Um, P-Town Subby, um, he can make uh, custom silicone molds, and I'm actually having him make me a bunch of them. One of the problems that I have with HDPE with epoxy products is epoxy is really hard on, on mold material. It'll stick more. And so I don't really like uh, using these with epoxy. So like liquid diamonds I use a lot. Um, I generally won't make anything out of this. That, and I guess the reason is, uh, sorry, let me start over. <laughs> Capture my thoughts. Um, what I'm talking about is if I'm putting burl, you know, in here, I'm going to hot glue that down and I don't want mold release anywhere in there. And so it's kind of problematic that you can't really use mold release on that HDPE. And then if you put epoxy in there, it just gets stuck in there. So I'm having him make me some silicone molds uh, to, to like my specifications, as well as some pen blank molds, because I want one inch. I don't really like the seven eighths. It's just not enough. So yeah, three quarter, I know, three quarter, one inch is, is what I want to. So I'm having him make them for me. Um, so you can have custom ones made by Fred. Hey, how's it going, Marcel? I just saw that. All right, so let's, uh, it's still sticky. I'm not that worried about the bottom because it doesn't really make any difference. So I think we're gonna kind of move a little bit forward here. Um, I'm gonna get the hot glue gun out. A lot of times there's a lot of hurry up and wait with this stuff, so I, I guess I could have had everything pre-made, but at least this way you guys get to see the whole process and listen to me babble. <laughs> For the folks that like to listen to me babble, the live streams are where it's at. For the folks that don't, they get all angry and upset. You talk too much. I know. The beauty of YouTube is you can just mute it. Or my favorite YouTube thing is to just go on like one and a half or two times speed and then they sound like chipmunks. And that's always good. <clears throat> All right, so here's my glue gun. I really like this one. This is the DeWalt. It heats up fast. It doesn't really cause much of a mess like compared to like the cheap ones. Uh, and it wasn't that expensive, maybe like 30 bucks, I wanna say. 
So I've, I've been really happy with this, with this DeWalt glue gun. I've had it for a few years now and it works pretty fabulous. Uh, I don't think that I need spray, you know, like mold release on this thing. Um, I think it'll be okay and I don't really want to spray it anyway because I'm going to be putting this thing in there. So worst case scenario, if this thing kind of sticks, then you just got to kind of carefully turn it off. It's not really going to be that, or just kind of cut it off basically and, and like, you know, pry the blank out of it. So I don't really care if I waste this mold. <clears throat> I'll be okay with that. All right. So I'm just going to add a little, you know, this isn't totally cured, but adding a little bit of hot melt glue is not really going to cause any problems. I don't really think so. I will be honest. I've never done this before, but can't imagine why it would cause it any massive problems. <clears throat> and the reason I'm gluing it is I just, sometimes the resin can kind of, well, two things. There is some moisture in this and it could float, usually stabilized wood being completely solid. There's nowhere for any air to really hang out in the inside. So they generally don't float in resin, but this thing does have some moisture and some other things. But the other thing about it is even if it's stabilized, if you don't glue it down to the bottom of your mold, the resin can kind of get under it and just kind of push it around. Um, so by doing it this way, it just kind of makes sure that it doesn't go anywhere. It just kind of stays stuck to the bottom for the most part. Now some resin is probably going to sneak underneath it, but it's not going to move it. If there are any gaps, it can kind of creep under there, but I just want to double check. Yeah, so good to go. And that the epoxy might be kind of helping as well. Just wanted to get that a little bit more centered. Okay, so we're good to go there. It's not perfect, not a big deal. <clears throat> I think we're gonna switch to the other camera because I think I'm just gonna get a bucket out and we're just gonna power mix this stuff. I think their instructions say to use like a big paddle, like a, a paint mixing paddle, uh, like stir stick and do it by hand. But I think the reasoning for that is because it's going to kind of foam it up a little bit, add, add air bubbles in there. And I'm not worried about that because we're going to pressurize it. So shouldn't be a problem. Okay. So there's our, our view. Let me get a bucket out. And you can just pick these these HDPE buckets up at like Home Depot. Uh, and they work pretty good. They got all kinds of different sizes. This one's a five quart. So it should be good to go. I'm going to kind of blow it out just to make sure there's no dust or particles or anything in there. Uh, actually, I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it on my little work table thing. I think it'll be a better view for you guys. It'll be easier for me to. Let's get this thing over. There we go. All right. So Again, we're going to be using Stone Coat Supercast. Uh, they have a few different types. They have Supercast. They have like their regular, like just tabletop epoxy stuff. And then they have one called Casting Epoxy. Basically, the, the regular one is for kind of really thin pours. I don't think you can pour much more than a quarter inch at a time. Uh, the middle one, you know, can handle a little bit thicker. And then Supercast can handle a pretty, pretty reasonable, you know, three inches. We actually poured a six inch PVC pipe. So about a six by six inch block and it didn't overheat. So now we're going to try and see, you know, a, a giant mass. This is quite a bit of resin and, and it's a big mass of it. So we're going to kind of see how does this all work with Supercast. 
This was the last experiment that I wanted to do with this stuff. Let's get kind of up a little bit. Whoa. There we go. Get these blocks out of the way. All right, now Supercast is a two to one. Let me just double check the, the instructions a little bit here. Two to one, so two parts of the A to one part B by volume, not by weight. That's very important. So, I don't know exactly how <laughs> accurate these lines are, but we're gonna have to kind of go with them. So, whatever we can get in here, we're basically gonna use all of this stuff. So, let me just make sure that you guys are on, on there. So we got our, our measurements here. One thing, if you're gonna be measuring resin by, by volume, make sure that you're not like standing straight up and looking down on that measurement. You need to get down and look, you know, hor horizontally at that line and make sure that it's even. Because when you change your perspective, it kind of can change things and throw off your, your measurements. <clears throat> so you do not want to do that. What I'm going to be using is a Makita, just drill, should work fine. I'm actually gonna get another battery ready, just in case. We got quite a bit of time to work with this stuff. It's got like at least a, probably like an hour working time, something like that, maybe a little less in the heat. Uh, and then what I'm gonna be using is one of these paddle mixers. And I just get these guys on Amazon. So I'll probably put a link, uh, I don't have one right now, but in, in the replay, I'll get a, go grab my Amazon link and uh, link to these guys. Okay, so let's get started. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour in my, my resin, get it all mixed up, then we're gonna add our shredded money and we're just gonna go for kind of a multicolored type thing. Um, I think, let's see here. What I might do is kind of break off cups and make like regions actually. So let me go grab I'm gonna grab some quart mixing cups. Uh, hold on a minute, guys. I just thought of this. Okay. So we got four colors of money. Technically we only need three of these guys. So I got some mixing cups that we're gonna, you know, once we've mixed up the resin, we're gonna break off different cups and add our money in these. Hopefully it'll be, an, I don't know if that's enough room, but we'll just have to kind of go with it. All right, so let's, uh, let's get going here. One half liter. Let me do it by ounces. I actually know how much that is. 32 ounces. Forty-eight ounces. I don't know if we're gonna get to the next mark <laughs> or not with this. So I'm actually gonna just go that far um, and we can always mix up more. Uh, in a smaller cup that has more more uh, graduations. So we did three pints. We need to do like one and a half pints, which there's not a one and a half, of course. Mm. 48 ounces. So let me, we need to go to half of that, 24 more ounces. Let's see here. Is that 64? No. 80? 48 plus 24. 72, right? There's no 72. So we're going to use a, a, a mixing cup to add the part B. A clean one. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
I generally don't like doing it this way. I like pouring everything in the same bucket. Um, the problem is I can pour in 24 ounces into this cup, but no matter what you do, there's gonna be some left on the outside of the cup. So I don't really like doing it this way. Um, I guess some people maybe use a cup for A, a cup for B, and then they pour both of them out. But even with that, I, it's, it's hard, you're still, I like being accurate, you know? And so I'd like to, <laughs> I'd rather just use one bucket. You're, you're, you're better off that way. But we don't have one bucket, so we're gonna go with 24 ounces in this cup, which is right there. And we'll just deal. I'm gonna add a little bit extra to kind of compensate for the fact that there's gonna be some left in the cup. And hopefully that'll do it. Okay. I think that with this amount of volume, I don't really think that a little bit off is gonna really make any difference, but you're always better off being more accurate than less. <laughs> so I always try, personally, I really like just using a scale. Um, I think that that's by far the easiest way to get accurate as, you know, results. Um, one thing to kind of note, I was talking about the, the amount of resin that we're mixing at once here. Um, the opposite is true of doing very small amounts of resin. Um, you need to be extremely accurate if you're doing tiny amounts of resin um, because, you know, slight, being slightly off, even, even your, your scale uh, can have some built-in error to it. Sometimes that's enough to throw off a, a mix ratio if you're only mixing up, you know, a tiny amount of resin. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, I'm going to put this on the low setting to start out. I'm going to get you guys in a little bit closer. Sorry. My camera crew's off today. <laughs> And you want to mix this for a good amount of time. So the, the clock says 420 right now. I'm going to be mixing this for about five minutes. Speed it up a little. Now, one thing to note, if you are not using pressure, I probably wouldn't recommend using a power drill and, and adding all of these bubbles in there. It just, the more bubbles you add, the more that need to get out of it eventually. So if you're just gonna be pouring this in place, that's why they recommend just using a stir stick. But it's gonna make you have to stir it even longer. One thing you want to do is make sure you're scraping the, the sides and bottom of the cup. Um, the bottom's getting pretty well scraped with this, this mixer. The sides may not be so much, so I'm probably going to come back with a, a stick and just kind of scrape them off.
All right, we've been going for about three minutes now, according to the clock. Probably stop at about four minutes and then scrape the sides and then kind of come back and give it one quick final. And then we'll be ready to rock. All right, we're at 424. Now, one thing to keep in mind, I am not an expert when it comes to this product or doing things this way usually. So um, I highly recommend, make sure you, you know, whatever resin you're, you're buying, um, if they have information on how to use their product, follow it. And uh, if there's other people that kind of do, you know, this, the same type, like, you know, slow setting resins and stuff like that. Doug's got some really good stuff um, on his channel. Check out how they do it so you can get the best tips. This is just kind of <laughs> how I would do it, basically. All right, so I'm going to come back with a stick here. Just kind of make sure that I'm getting all of the part A and part B mixed and, and scraped off the walls of this, of this uh, cup thing, bucket. Probably good, but one of the most common mistakes people make, uh, and if you didn't see my video, I've got a video on like the top five common mistakes. One of the big ones is just mixing problems. They don't mix it long enough, they don't get it mixed properly, or they, um, you know, screw the ratio up somehow. Um, and that's usually like the most common reason for problems uh, when people have problems with resin casting stuff. Um, I'd say probably one of the next things is probably moisture issues. Um, they don't realize that you can't just dump wood in there without something happening. Okay, so we got our resin mixed up. I'm just going to put this somewhere where it's not going to make a big mess. I'm going to scoot this back so you can kind of see what I'm doing over here. I'm going to dump out a little bit of this stuff into these buckets. I only want to fill it about that far probably uh, because we're going to be adding the shredded money in there and it's going to take up space in the cup. So. I don't know how much exactly. I'm not measuring this by any specific means. All right, so that ought to be good. <clears throat> now let's add some money. We're just gonna mix it in. You wanna mix it into the cup and get that money, you know, all the little particles of money um, kind of coated with your resin. Um, if, if you got a bunch of it that doesn't have epoxy on it, it's not going to really, you're going to have kind of cracks basically in the blank where there's no resin. So we'll just add a little bit at a time, mix it in, add a little bit more and kind of go from there. One thing that I actually found when we made the first blanks, which we used uh, stone coat epoxy, I actually didn't find that you needed to like really, really load up the resin with this stuff. It, it didn't really sink that much. So that's just one thing to kind of note. This, that, that might actually be enough what I just poured in to, to make this work fine. What I'm thinking is we'll kind of pour like two at a time and have like red, I don't know if you guys, yeah, you can see, kind of red, purple, you know, like kind of have quadrants somewhat. It may not really work out exactly like that, but kind of like that. Where they're not all just kind of mixed together. They're kind of, the reds are in one area, the greens in one area. Thought that'd be kind of, kind of fun. Fun to try at least. See, see if we can get that 
that effect to work. Let's add a little bit more. Um, I'm looking for kind of a consistency. Um, once it starts to kind of thicken up and it's a little bit more like, I don't know, kind of oatmeal feeling. It's kind of getting there now where, you know, it's pretty, pretty filled up. I think that's, that's enough money. And I didn't really measure this scientifically. I didn't actually measure out how much we put in there, but kind of just going by the consistency, this should be good enough. And the other thing, if, if it does tend to like sink down, uh, compress a little bit and, and fall to the bottom of the blank, it's probably not going to be the worst uh, to have just a little bit of a clear rim, you know, where there's not really much money. I don't think that's going to be the worst case scenario in this blank. You definitely don't want that in like pen blanks. You want to fill them as, as much as you can for something like that. But this one can have a little variation and I'm not really going to be that upset. All right, so we got green going in here. Let's mix that in. See, now that's still pretty thin. It's not really When I'm mixing it, it doesn't feel like oatmeal yet. This one's a lot thicker and harder to move around. This one's pretty pretty easy. So I'm going to try and kind of get more to that other consistency by adding some more. Sorry, I can't check the chat, guys. I will in a second here. We do have a lot of time to work on this, but I do want to kind of get things kind of set up, and then I'll stop and check in with you guys. Check in with the chat. So that's getting there, but it's still not exactly where I want it consistency-wise. So we're going to add a little bit more. Maybe like that. There we go. Now it's starting to get kind of, there's a little resistance when I'm trying to mix this. I'm trying to break up. There's a few like kind of clumps of the money and I'm trying to kind of break that up a little bit as best as possible. All right. And we got purple. Actually, I'm going to probably put purple in here because I think we have more resin in this one. Out of all the monies, this kind of orangish, meh, whatever, is my least favorite. So we'll, we'll put it in a smaller cup. I'm excited about this. This is honestly, guys, this is going to be the biggest blank I've ever made. Which does, which sounds kind of silly because I've made quite a few blanks, but I, I really haven't made particularly huge blanks. I think the biggest, really, at this point, the biggest one that I'd made so far is probably the, probably just like a six inch sphere blank. Uh, the and the peacock platter was kind of big all right that's definitely enough that's 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 kind of thick right there might actually add a little bit more resin to this one thin it out a little bit got 
some chunks. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit more resin to this. Thin it out just a little bit. All right, that one's looking good. Those are looking good. Let's add our purple. I really like this British currency. It's a lot more exciting than, than US currency. It's all just green. I don't know the denominations, but you know, if you lived in the UK, it wouldn't be that hard to be like, oh, the purple is $10 or 10, 10 pounds, you know, whatever. Um, ours, like, you got to look at the, you got to really look at it to figure out what, how much money you got there. Although, on the other hand, it's also easier for, like, thieves to spot. Like, oh, he's got a bunch of hundreds, <laughs> you know. So, I don't know. It can go both ways, I guess. Whoa. Still a little bit on the thin side. Tell you guys what, one blank that I really want to make is a kind of a hybrid wood and resin baseball bat, like full size. That's on my list. So I'm hoping maybe to come up with an idea. The, the biggest problem with that is I really think that I'd be better off when I turn it to get a, a steady rest setup. Um, I'm just a little bit worried that <laughs> it's gonna just break, you know, having that much. 30 inches of resin probably isn't going to last that long. All right, so let's switch to this view real quick while I check you guys out. See what's happening. Uh, I'll just scroll back a little bit and see what's going on here. All right. How do I cut the honeycomb? Um, so aluminum honeycomb sheets. I want to show you guys one thing since this question got brought up. Um, there's, I have a video on my channel, but it's, it's pretty simple, not much to it. Um, just use a bandsaw. Um, I think I'm using something like a 14, you know, tooth per inch, uh, blade. The big thing is make sure that you're cutting it. You know, you want the honeycomb to sit flat on the table. Do not try to resaw it, cutting it this way. It'll just crumple because there's no strength. All of the strength in this stuff is, is this way. So very simple, nothing to it. However, if you try to resaw it into thinner strips, you're gonna have to change your shorts. <laughs> Somebody asked me that, and I was like, ah, I don't know if I don't know if you can. So I tried it, and it just like crumpled, and like I was like, oh my god, it was a change your shorts moment. So that's that's all you got to do. Um, you know, the higher the the tooth count, the better it's gonna kind of cut. But I don't really, unless you're really going for something very specific. Um, you know, in like perfect, um, I don't think you need much more than like a 10, 10, 12, something like that. Um, frankly, I actually cut a lot of it out with a three TPI blade just to get it into the smaller sheets. Um, the other thing that I was going to mention, what was the other thing with, oh, the other thing that that's good is to have kind of a, like a zero clearance throat plate on the bottom. 
Um, it can kind of, if you got one of those huge gaps, you know, the, the bandsaw throat plate thing uh, insert, and it's got like, you know, a, a one inch, half inch gap or something like that, that's probably not the best. It'll be better to put like a, a thin piece of plywood and then cut it on that. That way you're not, you don't have, you know, the, the blade isn't trying to pull it down into that gap. That's the, the one other thing that'll give you a better cut. That's, that's just how it is with everything on a bandsaw though. Uh, let's see. So I want it like oatmeal. Yeah, I kind of like oatmeal. It's kind of, I got pretty good results with those pen blanks doing that. So it's kind of, kind of oatmeal-ish, I guess. <laughs> I did check to see that it fits in the pot. Uh, that, that is a good, that is actually a really good thing to bring up. Um, make sure that if you're, especially you're doing something that you've never done before, or you made a mold that you have never used before. Um, I've actually had, I've run into, you know, I made a, a mold, a, like a six pin, this, I, I call this a six pin blank mold. I made one out of uh, three quarter inch material and it didn't fit in the pressure pot after I was done because it was not half inch. <laughs> so the dimensions adding an extra quarter inch on each side, uh, made it to the point where it wouldn't fit and I actually had to round over the corners just to get it to fit in my pot. So um, before you use a mold, make sure that you know how it's going to go when you go to put it in there and that it'll fit and all that kind of stuff. Uh, very good thing to bring up. <laughs> I'm not going to drop it. Come on. Dave, the vacation was awesome. I'm, I'm missing Hawaii already. Let's see here. Yeah, I can't make it to SWAT this year either, but I, I'm pretty sure I'll be there next year. Yeah, it will be kind of weird, but Carl's going to be there and Scott and like everybody else is going to be there. So, you know, just me. How does that go again? <laughs> I don't know. What was I talking about? Uh, honeycomb fast setting. Uh, it doesn't matter what you use. Um, the only thing is some honeycomb like brands or manufacturers, uh, they don't work. They don't adhere as well. Um, that's why I did a bunch of testing and that's why I sell a product that, that works the best out of all the ones that I tried. So that's, I'd say that's the only issue. Um, you can use any resin though. I use alumilite or epoxy typically. I just, Frank, well, I, the one thing I wouldn't use is, is polyester resin because it shrinks more. So that's, that's the one thing I wouldn't do. All right, so before I pour this in the bucket, I want to replace this battery on this light real quick and we'll be good to go. Um, so if you were going for something where you really needed color separation, you probably want to kind of wait till the end of the working time, but I, I got to be honest, it's, it's really tough to do big blanks and keep the colors separated um, because I'm always worried that I'm going to run out of time. It's going to set up before I'm, you know, before I poured it. So uh, it's kind of a tough one. Uh, for big blanks, you're better off going with like transparent one color type things or very simple stuff where it doesn't really matter if it gets mixed around. With this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be pouring two cups at the same time, and we're gonna try and you know, keep those two colors as separated as possible. Then I'm gonna come in with the other two, uh, and we'll try and kind of do like a four quadrant type of deal. I don't know how that's gonna work. It'll probably push around. Once we get the first two in, they're gonna kind of set in the bottom. So we'll have to kind of see it. Maybe a little bit more of a kind of a layered type thing, uh, but it should be kind of cool. So let's, uh, let's, Make sure, let me, uh, let's see here. Oh yeah, Sam Angelo is going to be there. That'll be cool. He's awesome. I got to meet him in uh, Utah in person. He's cool. Yeah, so, uh, you, I guess you could do something like by hand with the honeycomb, but um, yeah, polyester, re polyester resin just, <laughs> I, I hate that stuff. It's just, there's not, not too much good about it. The one good thing about polyester resin is it's pretty easy to polish. Um, because it's that brittle type, um, it's kind of similar to, you know, the difference between lacquer and like spar varnish. Um, you know, spar varnish is more like taffy where lacquer is more like hard candy, you know, <clears throat> that brittle hardness, the, the texture, the way that that works, it just is a little bit easier to polish, um, to get the scratch marks out. 
I'm going to get this set so that you guys have a good view of what's going on. It may not be super close up, but I'd, I'd rather be a little bit further out and you guys see what's going on. Another thing we can do is it seems like we have more purple. We could pour purple in the bottom and then try to pour three cups at the same time. So I'm actually going to, I'm going to put that to you guys. What do you, th the only problem with putting the purple in the bottom is it might mostly get turned away. Uh, but what would you guys rather see? Do you want me to try and do like two and two or one and three, like pour just one in the bottom and then three? I will wait <laughs> for a second. Just one second though. If anybody has any thoughts on that. I think either way it's gonna look good. And I traded in my old iPad. So I, I'm gonna have to come up with a different solution because I got an iPad Pro and I don't really think I wanna bring that thing out here. Stick to the initial plan, Zombie Duke says. That's a good idea. The, the reason that I, I, two reasons, it looks like there's more purple and it's gonna be a little harder to pour that big bucket and a small one at the same time. But that's cool, we'll try it anyway. We got two, three two and twos. Looks like two and two is the way to go. Okay, so the good news is we'll be able to get the, the first two and two in no problem. I'm gonna have to move kind of quick. I could probably get three poured at the same time and then one somehow, but let's do two and two. I like that idea. Let's see how this goes. Part of the fun of resin casting is just seeing what the heck's gonna happen because you just don't know half the time. I don't know. You do after you've done it a few times, but um, let's go with, I wanna do purple and I think green on the top. So let's go with this red and kind of yeah, <laughs> whatever, orangish peach color first, okay? Are you, uh, one thing that's, one thing that I might recommend is to maybe go a little bit on the, th a little thinner than oatmeal because they'll pour out a little bit easier. Um, that's, that's the one thing if you're doing this money stuff. Let's actually, let's try and get you guys like over the action. How about that? There, that I think will be a better shot. You maybe won't see exactly what my hands are doing, but you should be able to see a little bit better what's going on in the bucket. Are you ready? Kind of like soup that the pink stuff was a little bit or the peachish color was a little bit on the thick side forgot to take my stir stick out of this kind of got it this one's just not really working because it's so thick you can kind of you got a little bit of room to play around with stuff. Now the pressure is gonna kinda collapse this a little bit down into the, the, the recesses and stuff, the creases, a little bit more. So that's kinda good to know. This is a pretty big blank. <laughs> wow. Woo. All right, so we still, we, it looks like we still kinda have some quadrants happening here. We'll have to see in the final blank how that actually turned out, really, you know. We're looking pretty good so far, I think.
That's pretty cool. What do you guys think? Not too shabby. So you think I'm going to dump this before I get in the pressure pot, Doug? <laughs> oh, I wouldn't doubt it. <clears throat> uh, let's see. We still have some resin left. And I don't exactly know what to do about that. I, I almost don't really want to mess with this because it actually kind of worked out the way that I had in my head a little bit. There's definitely a little bit more of the purple, but... And I don't know that adding this much more resin is really going to make that much difference in the test. So I think we're just going to leave it like this. But it's pretty cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get my gloves off real quick. I think I'm going to just take this camera off and kind of pan it in here, handy cam style, so you guys can kind of see what's happening. Looks pretty good. So it's going to collapse a little bit because when you mix in a bunch of little shredded things like this, there's a bunch of air trapped in here. And so when we pressurize it, and even if we didn't pressurize it, it would kind of, that air would kind of settle out a little bit. Um, you really want to pressurize something like shredded money though, because you're not going to get all the air out uh, otherwise. The pressure pot will just flat collapse air bubbles. So it's going to actually remove the air, whereas if you just left this the way it is, there's nowhere for it to go, so you're going to have a blank full of air, basically. Um, pressure pot will get rid of it. Um, one other thing I want to show you guys, some of you guys may not have seen this yet. Uh, probably should have done this before I put it back on the tripod. So in the pressure pot, I'm using my, my five gallon CA Technologies. And what I've done here to make it a little easier on myself, I just put a bucket, hard to get out one handed. I just got a little bit of a bucket in here. The Problem is trying to get that bowl down in the bottom of a five gallon uh, pressure pot is gonna be really tough. So, doesn't there's nothing that says that the, the the blank has to be at the bottom of the pressure pot it's not going to change anything so we're going to put this little platform and it'll make it a lot easier for me to get it in there so now what are my odds on dropping it doug because <laughs> i would agree i would probably drop it if i didn't do this <clears throat> the one issue is that red bowl is super fl like floppy flimsy so <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where I would bet myself. I might be kind of right in the middle there. And yeah, vacuum sometimes works, but the problem is if you're if you're using a resin that has a solvent in it, vacuum is going to lower the boiling point, and so it ends up just boiling in there. Um, it just doesn't really work well with with vacuum, uh, with resin casting in general. So just kind of watch that. Uh, pressure is the, the quickest way to go. You did, oh, the other guy did. Oh, okay. <laughs> is it on, are we on the right camera? Okay, so I'm just gonna leave the camera there. Uh, I'm gonna zoom out so that you can see me drop it if I do drop it. <laughs> uh, I, gotta, I gotta move out a little bit. You won't see me get it right in the pot, but you can see the bowl over there. So you'll see like the whole thing at this point. <laughs> if I screw up, I think I'll be okay though. I think it'll be all right. No biggie, no biggie. No whammies, no whammies. Ah, it was easy. It was easy, no problem. I'm gonna grab a, a stir stick and just kind of pat this down in a couple places. Some of it's a little lumpy here and there. That's kind of another way that you can, you know, if you're making like pen blanks, smaller things, kind of pat down the materials and, and try to compact them in the mold before you, you know, put it under pressure. For some reason, it actually does help. Um, I it just, I tend to get better results when I do that and get it kind of packed as much as possible. It doesn't appear like you're doing anything, but I think it actually helps. Okay, so that was easy. Did I forget anything? It feels like... I'm forgetting something. But we got the little piece of wood in there. We got the we got the money. I think we're good to go. 
So this is going to be under pressure. I'm going to put it up to 70. I, I've been, I got a little bit of a leak and it's a tough one to fix because it's like, I think it's down like, I don't know. I need to, I need to do a little bit of messing with this pot, but it'll definitely stay above 40 PSI, which is the minimum that you need. Um, it'll probably actually stay above 60, but a um, little bit of a leak in this pot, but I'm going to probably leave this under pressure. Actually, hold on real quick. Let me, before I do that, I want to show you guys, you guys were so far out. Let me, let me show you guys what, what it looks like in the pot, just in case anybody wanted to see that. It's a pretty tight fit and I had to cut the rim off of this thing to get it to fit in here. We're doing handy cam mode, handy cam. So it's a pretty close fit, but it fits pretty well. And it's looking pretty good in there. Just patted it down. We got a nice even layer on the top. So there you go. All right, I'm gonna put you guys back on the tripod now. Hopefully without tripping over my own feet. Okay. So now I'm gonna put the, the lid on. We're gonna pressurize it to 70 PSI. Um, whatever your pot, whatever pot you have, make sure you don't exceed the maximum PSI. CA Technologies pots are rated to 80 PSI max. I don't go over 70 in them. I like having a little buffer and it's not taking it up to the max every single time you're using it. I just kind of would rather stay a little lower and I don't think that 10 PSI is really making a difference. Um, for your 60 PSI pots, I would probably take them to about, I, well, I used to have a Harbor Freight and I would go to 50 in that and I think that's fine too. Main thing is you gotta be over 40 PSI and it can't leak below that. All right. <clears throat> One thing to note about five gallon pots, and this may not, when, when I say this, you're probably gonna be like, well, no, duh. It didn't occur to me. It takes twice as long to fill this as it does my two and a half gallon pots. Um, and if you're working with a resin that is super fast setting, that could burn you. Um, it could be the difference between it setting up and, and getting in there in time. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're, you're shopping for, for pots. It's usually not that big of a deal, but um, I use a, a resin that, that sets up in two minutes. There's no way I would use this thing when I'm using that resin because I just, I'm getting it in there and it's literally hardening. So just wanted to kind of mention that. <clears throat> All right, so we're back to the intro view. Let's see here. I'm going to scroll back up and wow, you guys talked a lot while I was doing this stuff. Uh, you may understand the physics, Billy, but a lot of people don't understand the, like, frankly, I had no clue. And I, I actually put epoxy under vacuum and it just like, it literally, it's not like it's, it's foaming. It's literally boiling. And so a lot of people don't really understand that. I don't really think it's a, a, a good way to, to use, it's not a good method. That's, and I just want to let people know, uh, that may not really understand how the physics works with that stuff. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, Jake shop is awesome. It's huge. It's nice. Okay, let's see. I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying to kind of catch up on what you guys were saying. Looks like you guys were just talking. Okay, cool. All right. Fake it till you make it. That's what everybody always says, right? I need a drink. Whew, it's hot. 83 degrees. Live streaming. You guys down in South Texas, I don't know how you guys are dealing with it. Unless you got air conditioning. So I guess that's about it for today. Um, I actually got to go and pour some more blanks. I, I, I got to catch back up on inventory. 
Um, but I hope you guys had fun. I can't wait to see how this thing turns out. So again, kind of the point of doing this, although just because I, like I would just do this anyway, but uh, I wanted to use that, that super cast from Stone Coat and, and make a pretty gigantic blank, like, like really pour a lot of it. Um, it handled, it handled a six inch, you know, six inch by about six inch deep, pretty much no problem. Um, it seemed like it maybe got a little bit hot on the top, but it handled it no problem and it turned fine. So that was the, the kind of purple jar thing that I just turned. So that was fine and that was the super cast, but I wanted to try something even bigger and just see if it, if, if, you know, if you can do that with one, you know, in one pour with, out cracking or any other problems. So we'll have to kind of see. Um, and for a lot of people, you might say, well, why did you just pour a bunch of, you know, resin in there and not put something in the middle to take up space? That's a really good way to do it. Um, I, but I'm trying to do a test. I just want to see what a giant mass of this specific resin would look like. Typically for something, especially that big, I probably wouldn't waste there because the idea is you're going to just turn out the inside of that and it's just going to be wasted resin. Um, I would usually put like a, a, a piece of wood in the middle to kind of take up space. It also makes it kind of quicker to core out. So on a normal thing, that's probably what I would do. Um, in this case, I wanted to kind of see how this worked out. So we'll have to kind of see, and eventually, you know, we'll have to get it turned. Now the super coat or super cast, the, the resin that I used, it, um, let me look at the directions again. I think it needs to stay in the pressure pot like 24 hours, I want to say. So they don't really, because this stuff is generally not used the way that we do it, they don't have the same kind of information on the bottle. It says dry to the touch 24 hours. I'm going to call that the demold time. I'm going to leave this in there till tomorrow night at five for sure. Um, and then pull it out. So I'll, I'll get pictures on the, on Instagram and Facebook. And I might, one thing that I haven't really used much is the YouTube stories. I'm, I need to, I don't really know how they work. So I might actually start adding, you know, like post type stuff on YouTube as well, if it works out the way I think it might. Um, but definitely this weekend, I'll get some, some pics of how this thing turned out. Um, and it should be pretty cool. I'm excited. This is definitely the biggest blank that I've made so far. So pretty, pretty cool. Pretty awesome. So I hope you guys had fun tonight. Uh, next week, I'll have to come up with something. I don't know exactly what we're going to do, but we'll have another live stream next Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. I uh, hope you guys can all make it out. And uh, if you guys want to check out or see something or if you heard me talking about something that you want to like remember, uh, I'll have the replay of this uh, probably on Monday, I want to say. Um, I'm going to be posting the replay from the last live stream this Sunday. So probably on Monday, I'll post this one, but it'll be a, a full replay up on my YouTube channel uh, next week, basically. So I hope you guys have a great night. I hope you had fun and I will see you guys all next Friday for another live stream. Thanks for joining the fun tonight. <laughs>